CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, here we go again. Another breezy day with a mix of sun and clouds. Next weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler joins us now. If this weather is not your thing, just hang in there. I'm sure changes are just around the corner. We've needed a little extra hairspray every yes. single day <laughs> this week. True. So we'd like to go back to normal, right? But hang in there. Yes, we have to have some patience. Right now, the temperature is 86 degrees in Miami. The high so far has been 87, even with the clouds and a, spring, a little spot shower here and there. 83 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, but again, it's the winds that are so gusty this afternoon. Highest gust has been 29 mile per hour, 18. Coming off the Atlantic now, we have an east northeasterly wind. That's continuing this afternoon, backing off overnight. Again tomorrow, same type of situation, same same direction again. Really, this pattern is just not changing. Maybe by the time we get to Sunday into Monday, then we'll start to see this ridge breaking down. But because of those gusty winds, high surf advisory, that will continue until 8 o'clock tonight along the coastal areas. And we still have also high rip current risk. That has been extended now through Saturday evening. So any beach plans that you have, be very, very careful along the coastal areas. And at the king tide, we're into that cycle at this point. And what that means is higher than normal high tides, and that can flood along the coastal areas. That salt water that comes in, it's being pushed in because of the east northeasterly winds and we're in that full moon cycle right now because this Saturday we have the hunter's moon that's going to be full. The moon rise will be early at 639 p.m. First full moon after the harvest moon. It's always called the hunter's moon and the reason is you go back a long way. This is the time of the year to call for the hunters to venture out and hunt for the upcoming cold months. Not too cold here in South Florida though. Look at these temperatures. 83 degrees Fort Lauderdale Homestead 84 86 and uh, Miami 84 and Marathon and everybody is getting that mix of clouds and sun these fast moving clouds making their way from east to west just a couple little sprinkles or light showers look how fast they move just zipping across Miami Beach trying to make it into little Haiti right now just to the north of downtown Miami they're very small showers but they're being pushed around a ridge of high pressure that has not moved so that's going to be the situation going into the weekend very breezy again and then by Sunday we might have a little bit more moisture getting in here. We'll have to see the forecast a little bit uncertain at this point. We might see a better chance for rain and then Halloween on Tuesday. It's going to be very warm with highs ooh, around 86 87 degrees. Humidity humidity will be up as well and I know that's important when you choose your Halloween costume. You want something that isn't too thick so it will be very warm especially spooky partly cloudy skies and we could see a shower as well on that day. So here Here's your forecast. Highs tomorrow, a lot like today, 87, just a 10% chance for one of those passing showers up on Sunday. And then next week, better rain chances are temperatures every single day sitting in the mid 80s. The manhunt intensifies in Maine. Investigators are still looking for the suspect in connection to multiple shootings. This afternoon, residents in Lewiston, Maine and surrounding areas continue to shelter in place. The White House is lowering its flag to half staff. It's a sign of respect for the victims of the mass shooting. Officials say at least 18 people were killed. The suspect is now facing eight counts of murder so far. Authorities still working to identify victims. CBS News Miami's Bradley Blackburn has the latest. Authorities in Maine are urging residents to shelter in place as they hunt for the gunman believed to be responsible for Wednesday's deadly mass shooting. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Based on our investigation, we believe this is someone that should not be approached. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. Officials say 40-year-old Robert Card, seen here in surveillance photos, opened fire inside a Lewiston bowling alley that hosts a children's bowling league. I don't know where he just came in and there was a loud pop. That was a balloon. About 10 minutes later, police believe the U.S. Army reservist fired at patrons inside a restaurant four miles away. A vehicle belonging to the suspect was found shortly before midnight in a nearby town. You and me and all these people standing here, we, we all got a fear for our lives today. Homicides here in Maine's second largest city are rare. The state itself has long been considered one of the safest in the nation. This city did not deserve this terrible assault on its citizens on its peace of mind, <clears throat> on its sense of security. 
No city does. A New York National Guard spokesperson says Card was taken to a hospital for a medical evaluation in July after acting erratically during training at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. As the investigation continues, President Biden has ordered flags to be flown at half-staff nationwide in honor of the victims. And here live outside the bowling alley, you may notice that there is no makeshift memorial that we so often see after horrible mass shootings. And that could be because people are heeding the warning here to stay home and stay out of danger as, as officials continue to look for this suspect. In Lewiston, Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Miami. Truly devastating. Hopefully authorities find that suspect soon. Bradley, thank you for your reporting tonight. Now to the Israel-Hamas war. Israel Defense Forces briefly sent troops into Gaza. They are getting ready for the next stage in the war against Hamas. CBS News Miami's Tina Krauss reports from Tel Aviv. Israel released video of its tanks entering Gaza overnight and striking Hamas targets. The military says the raid was to prepare the battlefield before an expected ground invasion to root out terrorists. In the meantime, the airstrikes continue. Ambulances raced through Gaza after Israel said it carried out about 250 strikes in the last day. The military says it's targeting Hamas infrastructure, but a growing number of civilians are caught in the crossfire, and hospitals are struggling to treat the injured while running low on fuel and supplies. While the conflict rages, protesters gathered in Tel Aviv to keep the focus on about 220 hostages held by Hamas since its October 7th rampage into Israel. I want my brother back. Now, I want him safe. I want to make sure that he's taken care of. I want to know what is the condition. As Israel continues its airstrikes on Gaza, Hamas is returning fire. Militants have launched thousands of rockets over the border, keeping residents on edge. Oh. This woman had stopped to talk with us when the sirens sounded the alarm. Her two sons are Israeli soldiers at the Gaza border. She says she's both scared and proud. Well, I'm very proud because they're good boys. They want just, um, they want just to live and to love. They don't wo want war. Israel is also positioned to defend its northern border with Lebanon, but the Israeli defense minister says its war is only with Hamas and that the ground invasion will begin when conditions are right. Tina Kraus, CBS News, Tel Aviv. A South Florida organization says Palestinians and Muslim Americans need more support. They say elected officials are not doing enough to protect them as part of the American family. CBS News Miami's Yvonne Taylor is in Sunrise with more. Naja, at this press conference, they talked about people in South Florida who allegedly lost 40 members of their family in Gaza or more. And they claim that these people are now scared or afraid of saying something here because they fear retaliation in the U.S. At this press conference held by Council of American Relations Florida chapter, they said fear prevails among Muslims and Palestinians, and they urge local and state politicians to recognize that the conflict Israel-Gaza has repercussions in South Florida. We are here today to give a voice to a people that have no voice, the Palestinians, the people of Gaza. They are human beings just as the Israelis are human beings. We couldn't get Palestinians, Muslims and Christians, although we reached out, but they were overwhelmingly afraid. They're overwhelmingly afraid to even speak for the loved ones that are stuck in Gaza, Americans that are stuck in Gaza right now. Coming up at 6 p.m., the testimony of a Palestinian girl who agreed to talk to us under the condition of not revealing her identity. We'll have that at 6 p.m. In Sunrise, Ivan Taylor, CBS News, Miami. Stay with us for the very latest on the Israel-Hamas war. We will keep you updated on air and online at cbsmiami.com. Stay with us. More news when we come back. 
Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. QuickCast. Time has been running out for Congress to get important legislation passed. A new speaker has got to get to work, and it is a very divided chamber. CBS News Miami's Natalie Brand has more details from Capitol Hill. On his first full day on the job, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson had a new crisis to address, a mass shooting in Maine. This is a dark time in America. We have a, a, a lot of problems, and we're really, really hopeful and prayerful. Prayer is appropriate in a time like this that the evil can end and this senseless violence can stop. Democrats renewed calls for legislation on gun violence, but say they're not hopeful. It will be difficult given the far right extremist speaker who's just been chosen in the House. And so uh, I'm determined that we will make the effort. Lawmakers face a long list of legislative work to resolve and tight deadlines, including the threat of a government shutdown next month. Like it or not, Speaker Johnson will not be able to ignore the need for bipartisanship in divided government. A bipartisan group of lawmakers, including the new speaker, met with President Biden at the White House Thursday to discuss his proposed bill to spend more than $100 billion on Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and border security. President Putin is not giving up on his aspirations to take all of Ukraine. And as long as Russia continues its brutal assault, we have to continue to support the Ukrainian people in their self-defense. But there is growing opposition to additional Ukraine funding by some House Republicans who are calling for a separate vote on the issue. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In Fort Lauderdale, the U.S. Coast Guard announced a half a billion dollars worth of drugs will not make it into South Florida communities. Earlier today, Coast Guard officials held a press conference. They made a massive international drug bust. Take a listen. This is about stopping and preventing the flow of illegal drugs into our communities and our cities in the United States that bring violence and death. Almost everyone has been touched by the scourge of illegal drugs in the United States or knows someone who's been impacted. Our efforts here are part of a national drug control strategy that is focused on saving lives. Coast Guard says they plan to continue to work with global security teams. It's to ensure that illegal drugs are stopped before they reach U.S. land. In a CBS News Miami investigation, we dig deeper into the challenges people face getting money from their insurance companies. CBS News Miami's Joe Gorcho explains what could be behind the issue. There's a lot of people here that aren't here anymore because of the storm because you know, they decided to stay. Greg Skazny lives in a Fort Myers Beach neighborhood leveled by Ian. His wife, son, and two dogs okay. now live in a camper where their family home used to be. Some days it's tough. You know, if, if you cramped into quarters, things aren't working right. He says he filed an insurance claim almost immediately following Ian. I have to deal with insurance is, is a nonstop pain. Since last November, Skazny's family has tried to receive what he believes would be a proper payout from his carrier. I didn't get full payout from my insurance. You fight them every day. I mean, I just called my public adjuster literally two days ago to try to collect more insurance that I'm due. We said we're still leaving the bill phase yet. And he's not alone, as we discovered, traveling around Fort Myers. We've all had trouble with insurance companies. Another resident shared her sister's struggles. Insurance did not give them anything. They denied everything, so they're fighting them with a uh, private adjuster. That's the CBS News Miami Quick Cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.